everybody knows the joke. I don't like cocaine. I just like the smell of it. Well, there's a fact that the smell of cocaine is actually quite pleasant. And today I'm going to show you, or at least demonstrate to you, what it smells like and how you can use it in cocktails. I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of Drink, and today we're talking about cocaine, or at least the aroma of cocaine and what it smells like. Now, as most of you know, Coca-Cola and their not-so-secret ingredient, cocaine, obviously this isn't the first word of their product name, uh, coca, is kind of that, it adds that flavor element that's hard to duplicate in other colas. And so lots of people on the internet have tried to make Coca-Cola from old possible recipes and from other cola recipes, but they never really get that cocaine or Coca-Cola flavor. And part of that is that they do use this cocaine element in it. Now, obviously there's no alkaloid or the drug in Coca-Cola anymore that pretty much stopped around 1905 or shortly before that. And it, but they did continue to use the Coca flavor. Now, there was a fairly big industry in cocaine back in the early 1900s, even the late 1800s. But even up until 1990, uh, there's a company that was uh, created a new method of extracting the alkaloids from the cocaine or the coca leaf. And then they actually make a coca flavor essence. And again, it was to be used in colas. It was just a, a different extract method than the plant in New Jersey that supplies Coca-Cola with. So uh, cocaine, or at least the aroma or the flavor compounds of cocaine are still used widely, but it, it is very hard for the individual to actually have access to this. So I got to change that. Now, the first ingredient is methyl benzoate. Now, this is used in perfuming. Obviously, the perfume industry uses it. Uh, at 100% concentration, it doesn't smell that great. Uh, so one of the things, whenever you're doing nosing of flavor compounds or flavor aroma compounds, you always want to dilute these down to about 1%. Now, this is 100%. And what it actually smells like, or the best description I've heard of it, was it smells like a toilet puck or a urinal cake. Now, if you've never had the experience of going into a men's bathroom, public bathroom, you might not know that smell, but uh, at full concentration, that's what it smells like. It doesn't smell bad, but there may be a bad association with the 100% concentrate. Now this, when diluted down, has a more floral, sometimes called balsamic flavor or aroma. Um, floral is kind of the best descriptor. And then there might be some fruit elements to it because you do find it naturally in fruits and plants. It's not an uncommon compound in the natural world. And the second ingredient is far more pleasant at 100% concentration, and this is methyl cinnamate. Now, this has a very much a strawberry cinnamon flavor or aroma. Now, the strawberry is fairly light, but it's there. But the cinnamon really steps out. And you, I believe you can find this actual in cinnamon plants. Now there is a third ingredient called truxilic acid. Uh, it is very hard to find. And the only source I could find of it was, you know, at a chemical supply company and it was $300 a gram. So I'm better off going to buy cocaine at that price point. But according to the patent where all of this comes from, and it does, it was found in a patent database. And this patent was uh, filed in the 1980s. And obviously it was designed to train drug dogs to identify cocaine and luggage and at security points. So that's where the recipe comes from. Now the recipe calls for 80 to 100% of methyl benzoate. That's the key compound for identifying cocaine. And this comes from, as cocaine degrades slowly, and it does degrade, uh, it, it releases methyl benzoate. And that's kind of the, you know, in the pure form, obviously the pure drug is different than the street drug because often the street drug will have kind of a, a solvent aroma to it mixed with this because of the, you know, the process they use in the jungles down in South America to process the raw cocoa leaf uses gasoline or kerosene. So the solvent nature of it sticks with it a little bit. So this is more to the pure side of coca leaf. So if you're just to harvest coca leaf and smell it, it would smell more like this, not like street cocaine. 
But the patent actually says 80 to 100% methyl benzoate and then 20% methyl cinnamate and optionally 10% truxilic acid, which is very hard to find and again, very expensive. So for the time being, we won't be able to try that. Now, will it make a big difference? Probably not. The reality is, is this can be detected at really low levels and Again, in the perfume world or in the flavoring world, less is more. You really don't want to go, if you think like, you know, 1% solutions are like what you're looking for, it's less than that. It's like, you know, one hundredth of a percent is where your aroma profiles are going to come from or even less. And that's what you want. But at a lower concentration, as I've made here, uh, it smells much better. And again, the combination of the methyl cinnamate. Now, a note, if you ever buy any of this stuff, uh, I might make this available on Art of Drink in the near future. Uh, I just have to get uh, it properly made. It, methyl benzoate does not dissolve in alcohol that well, so uh, I have to figure out a way to just keep it in solution. So where would you use this? The obvious answer is colas and sodas. Um, you use it in cocktails, definitely. Uh, Tom Ford makes a cologne called Tuscan Leather, and it is said to smell like cocaine, so it probably incorporates these two ingredients in it. Um, and obviously there's a fun element to it. You know, I don't recommend taking cocaine, uh, but I know a lot of people have, especially, you know, in the bar world where it's kind of a party atmosphere. A lot of the customers at bars may partake in that nasal delicacy. It's more in this idea of why did Coca-Cola use it? And again, obviously the cocaine was important because Coca-Cola did have about eight to nine milligrams of cocaine per drink. Now, uh, people say, oh, eight to nine milligrams is not a lot, but it actually is when it's cocaine. And especially if you're drinking 10 of them a day, so you get a 10th of a gram, it was enough to cause you to be addicted. But even after the alkaloids were removed, uh, the aroma compound still seems to be important for Coca-Cola. So obviously this flavoring compound, and most people do say it smells pleasant. So if you can work it into cola or any other flavor, beverage, whatever you wanna work it in, it's just gonna give you something more interesting. And one of the things you'll find on this channel going forward is that I'm going to talk a lot about flavor essences and making sodas and cocktails and other stuff. And though it is art of drink, so I will be talking about wine and other things in the future because I have a vineyard on the go. Uh, a lot of this is still gonna be that flavor compound, how to make your own unique things, because let's face it, people love novelty. Uh, novelty drives the drink world. Uh, we do like our old standbys, but we do get bored of them. So people often look for novel things to entertain them, to entertain their taste buds. That's the whole unique restaurant concept where people feel like it's all brand new. You can do this with flavor compounds and you can make it very interesting for people. And the more interesting they find it, the more likely they're gonna wanna visit your bar or drink your product. So this is why I do that. Now, uh, again, as I mentioned, I'm gonna see if I can get this up on Art of Drink, hopefully in the next month. I just gotta make sure this stays stable and doesn't separate when I ship it because nobody likes a separated product. But uh, that's it, it's interesting to play with. It actually smells good in an interesting and unique way. It may pull back some memories. Uh, again, Eben Freeman, a bartender in New York often played with this idea of cedar chips and cocktails and it would remind some people of woodworking and it would remind other people of hamster cages. So, uh, but it was always just a novel experience and that's what I like, these novel experiences and I could show you a lot of this flavor compound. So feel free to subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to get out a couple videos a month, maybe pick up that pace, who knows. But uh, if you want to learn more, subscribe, and I will keep putting stuff out there. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.